Hey guys, All in Crypto here, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video. Today, we are going to be looking at Cardano. It's been a little while since we've done an ADA update, um, and this is for no reason other than we've just been quite busy. You know, Cardano is still uh, one of my favorite cryptocurrencies, uh, and I think that a lot of the problems that the cryptocurrency market and, and these individual blockchains have faced have already actually been solved by Cardano on paper. They're just yet to um, be shipped as code in a, a, a working project. And actually, we're seeing three years on from the initial Hydra white paper. Um, and this was on the 4th of May. So this is only five days ago. Uh, Hydra actually go live. And I thought this was a very timely update because Monday I woke up to... Actually, it happened on Sunday night is really where it started to get noticed. BRC20s were introduced to Bitcoin. And this essentially saw, uh, at one point, I think it was over 500,000 transactions pending, which, you know, had a 20-hour clear time at seven transactions per second take place. Also with Ethereum, you'll notice if you use Ethereum's DeFi space that just to do a swap on Uniswap is costing you 70 quid right now. Um, and... Ethereum at the same time as Bitcoin had nearly 200,000 um, transactions per second. Now, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are more widely used and adopted, of course, than Cardano. However, and I thought this was a brilliant treat, uh, tweet from Sebastian. Uh, you can see his Twitter there. Well worth a follow. One of the brightest minds working within and outside of the Cardano space, within the blockchain space generally. And um, we recently did an interview with Sebastian on Layer 2s um, because I think we have very similar visions in regards to just how big Layer 2s are. On Ethereum, for example, we already see more traffic on the Layer 2s than the actual Layer 1 Ethereum itself. I think Cardano is going to be very similar. And the beautiful thing about Cardano is actually that it was always designed... Um, to be this way. And we're going to be replaying a clip of Charles Hoskinson actually talking about this. This is something that we've spoken about previously. And, and this is the beautiful thing about Cardano is they've already thought of a lot of the problems that may arise as a blockchain grows and came up with solutions that we are now seeing um, implemented. And of course, Hydra is a massive solution for scalability. So what I want to do, we'll look at the price um, after. You know, ultimately, I think that DCAing, and this is my approach really to being an investor in the cryptocurrency market. We exited the market last year. We got in at the first of this year, which was an amazing call. And ultimately, um, for me, I'm a believer that DCAing, you're never going to perfectly time the bottom. You're never going to perfectly time the, 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 the top. You can try. And if you do, congratulations. But in my opinion, I think you're better off accumulating um, at points like where we are today for the long call um, than trying to time the market. Certainly for most people, you, you guys will be aware that I am a trader. I do trade for a living. Um, and of course, uh, I've been an investor in the cryptocurrency market uh, for five years plus now. So very different approach to trading and investing. Uh, but that's just food for thought. We'll look at the price uh, towards the end. But let's get into this tweet from Sebastian. Cardano is currently at 94% load. So today it is currently at 77% load. If you had a similar, and this is, the, this is the reality here, guys, okay? And people don't like it when I bring things like this up, but I'm always going to be fair and reasonable. If you had the same amount of users on Ethereum and Bitcoin that Cardano did, Cardano would be at 100% um, capacity plus and you'd have to wait in a queue, just like we've seen for Bitcoin and um, Ethereum. However, there are answers to this. Of course, Ouroboros was designed with these issues in mind. And actually, we've seen the first integration of Hydra take place, um, which is nothing short of a glorious moment for Cardano, its community, uh, and the blockchain space at large, really. So only 6% left until Cardano is at max capacity. What does that mean, and how do you prepare? A reminder. No Cardano node implements transaction prioritization. That means that transactions are processed in first come first serve model. So if we hit 100% load, your transaction will get put into a queue with everybody else's. So what can you expect when we hit 100% load? 
three main things. You may have to wait for a while for your transaction to show up on chain. The further above 100% we get, the longer you will have to wait. Be patient and touch grass. Always a good thing. You know, we spend a lot of our time as traders, as investors, as cryptocurrency enthusiasts behind the screens. Getting away from the screens and touching grass, going outside, going for a walk is a change that everyone can implement, no matter your financial status or whatever it is, into their lives that will benefit you. Just a little side note there, guys. TXS may never make it to the blockchain. You don't pay a transaction fee if they never make it. This is usually caused by light wallet meme pool hitting capacity. Most light wallets like Flint Wallet allow you to specify a separate node uh, TXS get to get sent to. Best to run your own node. So this is Mithril is a massive thing that's coming to, to, to tackle this problem. Of course, Deadless, it's clunky, it's slow, but there's new integrations and it's kind of all coming full circle. Uh, of course, Flint is a project that Sebastian himself has worked on. Like I say, he is, he is uh, a pioneer in not just the Cardano space, but the blockchain space um, in general. Very interested in Milk Meter and Algorand. And of course, Mina Protocol is something that we have looked at in a long, or we haven't looked at in a long while, but something that is on our radar. Uh, State pools will start selling... Um, Priority access, they may sell it to users and they may sell it to dApps. Uh, priority on decks over another. Keep an eye out for who or, or for how this may impact which decks is the best to use at any given time. So this is interesting. You've got to remember with Ouroboros, there are currently 3,141 pools. Now, how many of those are actually minting blocks? I'm un unaware. Remember, guys, we do have a state pool. All in is the ticker. We've been here since 2021 and we plan on being here indefinitely. Uh, and if you guys want to, we had a bit of a hiccup uh, with some of the people that were or one individual that was helping me um, do the sort of technical side of the state pool. However, that issue has been eradicated um, and we are now back minting blocks um, and uh, back on the track, hopefully to um, becoming a prominent state pool uh, once again. So if you guys can just be patient, we will get there. And ultimately, we've got a very long vision um, or horizon for uh, the all-in state pool. So you might wonder, you might wonder why any of those actually happened. Yes, all three of these happened back during the peak bull market on 2021. Best to learn now to be prepared, as it doesn't look like things will be slowing down. So. These things and these issues are likely to occur again on the layer one. And this video, and this is why I'm highlighting this tweet, is to help you guys be prepared for it, understand it, um, and, and not panic when that situation does arise. There's two ways you can look at Bitcoin and Ethereum's issues with scalability. One, you can see it as a good thing because of there's clear demand there. Uh, and of course, two, you can see it as well, how is this ever going to be scalable? And of course, Ethereum and Bitcoin in regards to Lightning, you know, have come up with their kind of ways um, to solve this. And you can think of Hydra almost like Lightning, but it's not. Um, it's completely different in how it's done, but similar kind of concept of taking things off the layer one onto the layer two. And this is the beautiful thing about Cardano that people don't realize. Cardano deserves a lot more credibility, not just in the proof of uh, stake space, but in the layer two space that it gets. It was first on the money um, in both of these uh in regards to both of these um, sort of pieces of uh, or, or contributions to the blockchain space. So next question, are we actually better off than 2021? Yes, actually, a lot of scalability roadmaps from 2021 has been implemented. Of course, there is more that can be done. Of course, this is what's looking to be implemented. Milka Meter is one. Um, we also have things like Hydra Mainnet, Hydra Testnet. Uh, pipelining, uh, and so on and so forth. And we've got things like Aiken uh, and so on, which look at different scripts. Um, so what else can be done to scale Cardano? Increase block size again, of course. Uh, more DAP migration to Plutus V2. This will make a huge difference. Uh, tiered fees, so pool stop selling priority and fees instead get uh, captured by a proper on-chain marketing. This is why I think Sebastian's such a great mind because he, he, you know, he's at the heart of all of this. 
Usage of side chains and layer twos to move traffic from the layer ones, Milk Amida, Pyama, and Hydra. Develop a DA layer to move more data of the layer one, uh, off the layer one, so there is more room for blocks. Input endorsers is still on the roadmap. Icon and other Plutus alternative adoptions. So we looked at Icon again. We've also looked at uh, Epsom language and, and what Imperta Lang was doing. You know, these are really impressive things. So there are more uh, creative ways to improve scalability on Cardano, such as dApps and wallet implementation, uh, better UTXO selection algorithm. Uh, we've done work to help enable this. And you can see, of course, this is uh, usage on Milk Amida. It's pretty cool. Um, that is to say, get ready to hit 100% in the short term and look forward to the scalability improvements coming in the future as well. You can check the blockchain load yourself easily on, of course, pool PM, which is what we're doing. It's currently at 77%. Guys, we do have a stake pool. If anybody does want to stake with the all uh, in pool, please do feel free. We are now uh, minting blocks again uh, pretty regularly uh, and ultimately hope to have this continue. But we do need to get our stake up. I'm going to be doing some stuff to, to, to help this. And if you guys do have any spare card on it that you want to delegate, please do consider it. You will get rewards. Um, and ultimately, once we get over that sort of one point, we did have 5 million ADA in the pool at one point. Um, but obviously, with the bear market and so on that we've survived, unlike many other pools out there, um, it's taking its toll. But we are back on the road to redemption, hopefully. Um, and of course, talking about all of this, this is a, the, the, the whiteboard clip that we keep showing of Charles talking about this. And this is five years ago. And to me, this is groundbreaking stuff even today because most blockchains have gone in that direction. We have Hydra, of course, which was announced by Input Output, uh, which is a massive deal. Essentially, it takes to layer two, it takes transactions off of the layer one onto the layer two, but doesn't really compromise for any of the security. I just want to play this clip again before I love and leave you and talk about the price, guys, very quickly. You know, I'm going to be totally transparent here in regards to the price. We're accumulating here you know ultimately i don't think it's long you've got the same dna for bitcoin which we talk about on a daily basis actually the stock market even has similar dna i don't really want to go down that route with this kind of potential head and shoulders you've got gold at resistance the stock market at resistance the dollar at support bitcoin at resistance you know 30k was always an area of interest for us always an area where we suggested that you were going to have a bit of a pullback from course that has taken a bit more of a brutal toll with the likes of cardano but i do believe look for a double bottom scenario if it continues to fall that this will turn and actually that cardano is well on its way to the upside this year i've got very high expectations for the cryptocurrency market at large so we've kind of got the the, the general price consensus out the way if you guys want more just price specific videos um please do let me know um because we will look to do that on more of a regular basis we used to cover cardano a lot more regularly in regards to the price um, but as interest waned, um, we started to limit the amount of content we put out. But we will get back to it. We've just got to see the demand for it. Let's just play this again because Ouroboros is literally, I, I believe, one of the best proof of stake mechanisms out there. And actually other entire blockchains, I think, have been built with the similar, a similar kind of concept to Ouroboros um, in mind of, of this kind of beating heart of an ecosystem that can secure multiple chains, layer twos, and so on and so forth developed a peer-reviewed white paper for a provably secure proof-of-stake protocol called Ouroboros. And Ouroboros is among one of the most efficient consensus protocols in the cryptocurrency space. And it's the first to actually be proven secure in a very rigorous cryptographic way. The magic of Ouroboros is that it's been designed in a modular way, and it's been designed with future-proofing uh, in its DNA. So, namely, how Ouroboros works is Ouroboros breaks the world into epochs. It takes a look at the distribution of tokens and it gra from a source of random numbers, it's able to hold an election and create slot leaders. Now, these slot leaders functionally do the exact same thing that a miner would do in Bitcoin. So this is basically the same as a person who discovers a block, wins a block in Bitcoin. But the difference is that it doesn't require the extensive computational resources that Bitcoin requires to construct a block. 
And as a consequence, this system is considerably cheaper to run, even though we still have similar security guarantees that Bitcoin currently enjoys. So it's a major advancement. But the other really interesting thing is that these slot leaders don't have to just maintain a single block and a single chain. They can actually maintain other blocks and other chains. Because the cost of constructing a block is so low, it's actually now tractable to talk about consensus over a range of blockchains instead of a single chain. Furthermore, epics perhaps could even be run in parallel. So instead of having one epic run and then another epic run, one could develop a system using Ouroboros where epics run in parallel and transactions are partitioned accordingly. What this effectively means is as you gain more users and your users gain more capabilities, these slot leaders will be able to maintain more types of blockchains and also run transaction processing for blockchains in parallel. This is a major advancement. The other cool thing is that Ouroboros has very rigorous security standards in terms of its, its theoretical foundations as well as its implementation. So we'll leave it there, guys. I think you get the point. I'm always going to bring that clip up because honestly, you know, I think Cardano in terms of the ideologies that were put into it, honestly, is miles ahead of many of the blockchains out there. And you do have blockchains out there that are like, you know, 100,000 transactions per second. No one's using them. You know, if you really look under the hood of that 100,000 transactions per second, maybe in regards to sending them, you know, a transaction, but in regards to using it in a DAP, a DeFi, a smart contract, it gets very complicated. However, Cardano has the answer, um, uh, the solution for many of these um, problems. So that's all I've got for you guys. I thought this was a bit of an interesting video, letting you know that 100% capacity is likely going to be on the cards, as Sebastian points out. Uh, I'll leave a link to mine and Sebastian's interview in the description. Um, and on that note, I will love and leave you. You know, we're not worried about this price action one bit for long and strong crypto at this point, despite everything going on um, in the banking sector, in the economy broadly with rates, the Fed, so on and so forth. And of course, we talk about the reasons why on our daily cryptocurrency market updates. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. If you enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate those a comment, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you in the next.